We just released powerful new data called Bought in Past Month, which is going to change how you look at sales estimates moving forward. Stick around and I'll show you how. This is really exciting stuff. Amazon historically has never shown us what the actual sales are for each product. All we've had to rely on is various apps, including analyzer tools that are really using guesstimates to try to determine how much a certain product is selling. And we know when we're looking at purchasing a product from a wholesale supplier, whether that's a brand or distributor, one of the core questions is how much does this product actually sell? And we now have real Amazon sales data that we've never had before. The bought in past month column that we've now added to the app is not an estimate. This data comes directly from Amazon and for the very first time shows us exactly how much that product has sold according to Amazon. One of the major drawbacks of using traditional estimated sales is they don't account for variations very well. That's because Amazon only attributes a sales rank to all of the variants. And so there's no way to really determine which variant is selling more than the other. As you can see in this example, this variant is, is showing 311 sales per month with bought and past month but the estimated sales are showing 16,000. Well, that 16,000 is really for all of the variants combined, uh, where the 311 is now showing you the sales for this exact variant. You can see more detail if you actually click into the product details where we show our product variations table, and you can see that there's one particular variant getting 56% of the sales. And then down here, you've got variants that are the same product, but they're really not getting any sales. One of the features we find to be super useful that we provide for the bought and past month column is showing you the data in a historical way if you choose to see it that way. So in this case, we're running this data using an average 180 day uh, historical number, which means that we look at the last 180 days and we average out the bought and past month sales data and present that figure to you. Now, what does that do? Well, think about uh, products that may be seasonal, um, that sell well at a certain point in time and then don't sell well for the rest of the year. If you're in the United States, Halloween comes to mind. If you look at a costume in October, um, that costume isn't going to sell very well in November and December, and you may hold that inventory for a year. You can make adjustments to how you see your data in the settings and we've combined the settings for estimated sales and bought in past month in the same drop down and you can see we've we have 180 days selected here uh, but we could easily change that to current sales or 30 or 90 day options as well now how does the bought in past month data compare to our algorithmic estimated sales well, you can see they're pretty close in some cases, but pretty far in other cases. Um, so you can see here, for example, 135 versus 134 is right on the money. However, um, you do have um, products like this one, for example, that uh, we did not pick up sales with our algorithm, but Amazon is saying that it sells 50 products a month. This will help you find those opportunities. Here's another one right here, uh, 50 versus less than five. And um, we've already looked at these uh, variations, which are a massive difference, where now you can see variant level as estimated sales versus the entire listing. So I think it's quite impactful. Uh, for example, this one down here shows 358 sales, whereas the regular uh, sales estimate shows nothing. Um, as always, you can filter this column just like um, any other column, and you can for example, only look at products that have more than 50 uh, bought in past month, and you could very easily narrow down a list based on real sales numbers now and find those winning products. I hope you guys find this information useful. If so, let us know what you think. We're on X, Facebook, or you could send us an email at support at analyzer.tools. Enjoy it.